Okay. It looks like I have a new spell. I want to deactivate or not activate the army. I currently don't believe we need to activate it. I don't activate it at all. I don't need to. I don't have any play ones anymore. For the next stop, we'll call it please. simply put the PRP in six equal volumes, applied cavitation with sonication, and then we sonicated for 30 seconds, maintaining the specimens at 
uh, four degrees Celsius at all times. Uh, we gave it a rest at 30 seconds to prohibit protein denaturing and destruction of the growth factors, and then centrifuged off the byproducts, and now we have pure growth factors. And what we found was that after 15 minutes of sonication, we had comparable growth factor concentration of PDGF at AB to, to bovine thrombin and to calcium gluconate, but not activated PRP at much lower concentrations of PDGF AB. But we wanted to take it a step further. Uh, we already knew that calcium gluconate works as well as bovine thrombin. So we decided to take the protocol to a total of 30 minutes of sonication. And this is when the uh, sonication left traditional methods of activating PRP in the dust. The, we let them wait while the rocket ship took off. At 30 minutes of sonication, our VDGF, which is a very important growth factor, increased significantly over calcium gluconate activation. It also was significantly better than regen. So again, the type of kit seems to be very important in terms of the growth factor concentrations and the results. With the PDGF BB, we found that the 30 minutes of sonication significantly out outweighed uh, calcium gluconate and also that it outperformed uh, regen at all levels. IGF-1, we found that they were all similar, but it still was better than with region. And then TGF beta 1, again, 30 minutes of sonication significantly outpaced traditional methods and outperformed region. So there appear to be numerous factors that control uh, the growth factor concentrations, one of which is the kit and obviously now uh, sonication. And the method of activation with calcium gluconate and bovine bronze, they're both similar. But then not activated PRP will definitely give you a lower concentration. But why? Why would we see a higher concentration from sonication with some growth factors, but not all? Well, the fact is that it was the high molecular weight growth factors, growth factors in the 25 to 37 kilodalton uh, area where we saw a difference. And so what's happening is the, the larger growth factors are being trapped in that fiber mesh clot that forms with the plate activation. And they can't get out. But the smaller growth factors, down around seven, eight kilodaltons, are able to get out. And that's why with IGF, we found it to be similar regardless of whether we, we uh, sonicated or we uh, uh, use calcium now we definitely have seen an increase in hair density. Whether that translates into an improvement in coverage is really not quite known. But it's definitely an improvement in density. This was ridiculous. It went from 310 hairs to 720 hairs. Um, so my objective is to squeeze the lemon a little harder and get a little bit more. But the question was, we knew we could increase density. What might these higher concentrations of growth factors do for us? Well, we already know that we transplant hairs approximately 10% grows every month. So in three months, we should see about 30% of the grafts in the growing phase. So it's okay, let's look at that. For this, we use this whole thing done to do the injections. This is a tip I got from Dr. Gentile. I'm gonna skip the video. Uh, and so we did a side-by-side -side evaluation and we put calcium gluconate activated PRP on one side of grafted area and we put sonicated PRP on the other side and then we followed it up. And what we found at three and a half months was we had an improvement in terms of the yield on the right sonicated side as compared to the calcium gluconate. So we decided to study it a little further. We used the angel arthritis system. Um, for this particular study, we also used some regen in some of these boxes, and we also used saline. So you can see here in this study, we used sonicated PRP here, saline here, and calcium gluconate here. Now, 
it doesn't really matter what they look like, it matters what the yields were. And we'll get into that. But we found that, that I was getting higher yields than I was expected with saline or with the uh, uh, regen. And so I wanted to kind of move things around because I thought there was some bleed over. For example, when the patient lays down, so I'm getting PRP from the front, it goes this way. If it lays to the side, it can go from one side to the other. So I just So I just kept moving things around. And in this particular study, we did hair count and we did graph count and uh, just kept moving things around. What did we find? At three and a half months with calcium gluconate activated PRP, we had 73.5% yield, um, but we had an 89% yield with sonicated PRP. And saline was much better than I expected, 57%. I would expect it to be close to the control. We did nothing, which was 30 to 40 percent. At four, things really began to separate. And with sonicated PRP, I had 99 percent of the hair and grafts growing versus 75 percent of the PRP and 72 percent of the For our last one, which is Dr. Walters talking with him waiting. 